water is one of the most abundant resources on Earth. But fresh water is one of the most scarce. Only 3% of the Earth's water is drinkable. Only a third of that is readily, economically accessible. What are we doing to protect this vital resource? It will sound counterintuitive to a lot of people, but the leading source of water pollution is good old-fashioned dirt. When it's stirred up and turns the water brown and chokes off the oxygen and blocks out sunlight, it can disrupt aquatic ecosystems quite severely. If you go back 30, 40 years ago, an awful lot of America's major waterways were in really terrible shape. One of the primary causes of sediment and water is erosion caused by intensive plowing and tilling of agricultural land. Farmers started plowing the soil to control weeds. We did mostly uh, uh, plowing uh, where we turned the soils over black. We'd have to go over it and uh, disc it once or twice and then we'd go and plow the land and then we'd harrow the land. In that time period there was a lot more erosion. That kind of constant plowing loosens the soil and leads to the dust bowl conditions we had in the early part of the 20th century. Tillage is foreign to natural systems and it leads to erosion. In the years since this land was settled in the mid-1800s, a half of our topsoil has been lost due to erosion. The loss of high quality topsoil is a serious problem, not just for the water, but for the productivity of farming. One of the major goals of the farmer is to protect his, his resource, and his resource is his land, his soil. Well, I don't think any farmer can look at a field after a heavy rainstorm and feel good about seeing soil wash away. It's a very sad and, and disheartening thing. Soil makes all the difference of whether or not you're going to be highly productive with the crops that you grow. And so we want to save the soil that we have and that we're blessed with. More than 50 years ago, agricultural scientists developed a product called atrazine to help farmers protect their crops from weeds. That product has become a mainstay in modern agricultural farming and is an essential component of a revolutionary farming technique known as conservation tillage. About in the 1970s, uh, there was a revolution in agriculture, a real conversion from conventional intensive tillage systems to a system that was more in tune to the nature, conservation tillage. There are so many things we can do to be better stewards of the land, and I think no-till farming is a major one of those. When no-till first became a practice, uh, I was pretty skeptical, uh, thinking that uh, you know this is a practice that might not work here in our heavy soils. Adapting to no-till as well as minimum till has really helped the quality of the soil. The, the soil becomes more mellow. Atrazine's reliable performance on many weeds under a wide variety of conditions, especially the conditions we have with no-till or conservation tillage, gave farmers the confidence that they could control weeds without tillage. Atrazine works by preventing the growth of harmful weeds that starve crops of nutrients, sunlight, and water. This means farmers can control weeds without tillage, and that keeps the plant debris and organic matter in place protecting the soil from erosion and improving its ability to retain water. In many ways, the soil behaves more like a prairie soil, higher in organic matter, better soil structure, water soaks in rather than running off. Over the last 50 years, atrazine has been the subject of some of the most rigorous and in-depth safety studies of any product used in agriculture. Enabled by atrazine, no-till corn farming saves up to 150 million tons of topsoil every year. That's enough to fill five million dump trucks. That's soil that is staying on the farm where it's needed and staying out of our waterways. Since we started monitoring soil erosion very seriously in the early 1980s, we've seen about a 40% decline in erosion rates in American farmland, which is considerable progress. Well, when I was a kid and used to fish and swim in this creek, the water was muddy. Yeah, you would not have been able to see the bottom of the stream, but you can see today the water is clear, you can see to the bottom. But thanks to the conservation efforts of farmers up in the watershed, most of that sediment that used to erode from fields and get into the water is, is kept on the land. Well, no-till actually creates wildlife habitat. These corn stalks you see here actually provide cover and nesting sites for birds. When I was a kid, I wouldn't have dreamed of seeing deer or coyotes or wild turkeys or bald eagles. They just weren't there. Uh, today, all that wildlife is back. There really has been an explosion in wildlife. 
with conservation tillage with no-till, we actually use our land for a dual purpose. We can efficiently produce food and fuel and fiber and also provide wildlife habitat. In addition to its other benefits, no-till farming also reduces the carbon footprint of agriculture significantly. Now when you till a field, it causes organic matter in the soil to degrade and to release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Actually in a no-till field, we're taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and putting it into organic matter, improving the soil quality. We're also not using nearly as much fuel. We're not doing all the tillage driving over the fields so much, and so we're, we're re releasing less carbon dioxide from fuel burning, and we're protecting those fuel sources. By providing farmers with a new tool to control weeds, Atrazine has done far more than replace tillage. It's created a pathway for agriculture to become truly sustainable and work in harmony with the environment.